I'm sitting here looking through all the different virtues of total quality management. Now, total quality management, this is the one management principle that Dennis Flores had come across a long time ago when he was, you know, just but a wee lad in the 18, uh, in the 90s, in the 1890s. So, um, the old goat head had got the total quality management theory lodged into his head. He's used it his entire life. And he banks on it, and that's all he needs to know. He's got one ideology. He's going to stick with one ideology. It's worked for him, and that's all he's ever going to, you know, just. So total quality management, there's eight virtues here. Customer focused, uh, total employee involvement, process centered, integrated system, strategic systematic approach, continual improvement. And then there's fact based decision making and communications. Communications. If you didn't know that's good for business, it's good to communicate with your employees and your customers and uh, maybe your friends and family. I don't know. Who knows? Communications. I never would have thought communications if it wasn't on this list. And several of them. Strategic, systematic approach, continual improvement, fact-based decision-making, right? Like data-driven uh, facts. We need data-driven fact based and of course you do customer focused that's who you're selling all your stuff to it has to be your entire business has to be customer focused total employee involvement so i guess they have to be completely brainwashed for through and through process centered and anyways none of this actually even defines what total quality management uh is this was from a textbook the certified manager of quality organizational excellence handbook but uh, just like with any of these other theories out there, my theory, the theory that I like uh, best is Frederick Winslow Taylor. Now, I don't like the man, I don't know anything about him specifically, but the term scientific management. So when you think about what kind of ways are there to manage, well, first of all, manage is bullshit, right? Total quality management. Management, that's not a leader. There's a difference between leadership and management. A leader is somebody who inspires you, right? MLK says, let's, you know, we could do this. He doesn't say, uh, you do it or else I'm going to fire you, right? Either I'll ruin your life. So that's a manager. A manager is an oppressor, whereas a leader, like a referent leader, is somebody who inspires others. So management is not the same thing as leadership at all. It's not even close. So if he's only been a manager, that means he's only been in an oppressor. And you can't just talk to, uh, you need your heart and your brain. You need both. So you can't just, you know, scientific management. That's the long run, right? The Enlightenment was circumvented by the Romance era. And it doesn't make sense to me because science, you know, we have gotten so far away from science. The Romance era almost brings some of the, you know, talking about um, God and whatnot. So romance era, that's the next after science. Anyways, I don't think we have a scientific society or an enlightenment. So Frederick Winslow Taylor believes in scientific management. I believe in scientific management. Here's a quote from Frederick Winslow Taylor. He says, whenever a workman proposes an improvement, it should be the policy of the management to make a careful analysis of the new method and, if necessary, conduct a series of experiments to, to determine accurately the relative merit of the new suggestion and of the old standard. And whenever the new method is found to be markedly superior to the old, it should be adopted as the standard for the whole establishment. Frederick Winslow Taylor also warned explicitly against cutting peace rates, i.e., wages or discharging workers when efficiency improvements reduce the need for raw labor after a workman has had the price per piece of the work he is doing lowered two or three times as a result of his having worked harder and increased his output he is likely entirely to lose sight of his employer's side of the case and become imbued with a grim determination to have no more cuts if soldiering marking time just doing what he's is doing what he is told can prevent it so there's two ideas there. One idea is saying whenever there is a the labor person, I remember actually being at a lumber mill, and I said you know, at, we would waste two hours sweeping dust from one end of the factory to the under, other end of the factory instead of just taking our piles and then taking a shovel and then putting it into like a 
uh, wheelbarrow. Instead, we just would sweep one pile to the next pile to the next pile until it was it was ridiculous. It took two hours, and we were just sweeping. And I, I don't know if it was just an oppressive asshole tactic. That's what it seems like to me because I said it would be so cheap. How cheap would it be just to have a trash can and a shovel? A shovel is not, what, five bucks? And then labor is your most expensive um, you know, cost in an organization, so you want to save on labor costs. You don't want to do doing this, you know, labor that's not producing any kind of output. There's no production value to it whatsoever. It's not increasing the GDP. But he didn't give a shit. He's the boss, so only he could think of things, and so I had an idea to improve the thing, but he probably went ahead and did it afterwards, but after that, I it was kind of hard to you're not going to take me fucking serious? That's a smart business, you know? I'm trying to care about the organization the way I would care about the organization if it was mine. And uh, if it was mine, I would want to save on labor costs. But you're just a worker bee, so shut the hell up. You shouldn't think, well, this says to test it. Listen to your workers. Turn the shit over in your minds. If the worker actually is seeing something that you're not seeing, then you, uh, you know, do it. You do it. If it's a good idea, a good idea is a good idea, no matter whose mouth is it's coming out of. And actually, on the flip side of that, uh, the Lori Winner wants to talk about white privilege. The white privilege is not the homeless white people. The homeless white, you know, that's the people who's got white privilege. The white privilege are your Lori Winners in society who can ignore injustice. Right in front of her face, in front of her eyes. I wonder if she walks past the homeless every day. I wonder if the homeless live next to her. I wonder if she's totally got rid of all the homeless. She's got a lot of rental properties, so she's all about exploiting people, and she don't give a shit if, you know, if you're homeless, you don't have no rent money, so you can't pay her, so she don't give a shit about you and your life. So it's white privilege to ignore the homeless, the plight of other people, and injustice. And when you ignore injustice over and over again, you actually train your conscience to always ignore injustice. And so that's evil. That's wicked. We should be a society where we see, you know, some dumb shit going down and we say, fuck off. This is some dumb shit. And then we, you know, rectify it. We fix it. But um, instead, instead of listening to our workers or paying them a good wage... You know, so Frederick Winslow Taylor, I believe in scientific management. And then those two quotes, I like those two quotes a lot. So it says, listen to your workers. So Dennis Flores, you should listen to your workers. When somebody says instant runoff voting is a better voting uh, system, you should listen and turn it over in your head. Just because you've only thought about one ideology your entire life doesn't mean, doesn't mean you're right. And there's also a whole bunch of other management uh, tactics out there, other management theories. You got total, so total quality management. Um, the other uh, theories, you got quality control is what this is also called. There's other quality control. There's ISO 9000, ISO 9001. Uh, there's lean. The Toyota theory of management is called lean, L-E-A-N. It's called lean management, where reducing waste is the most important virtue. And really, all these management theories hinge on one major idea. So the total quality management, it, the thing is, it's a shift manager over the assembly line and its quality. So it's like a shift leader over a shift leader over the assembly line. And then they could say, well, maybe we could do this better. Maybe we could do that better. Are you doing it to the best of your ability? A, a person who goes around to ensure that there's quality all over the place. So quality is a good thing, right? I don't hate quality. Quality is a, a great thing. The continual process of detecting and reducing or eliminating errors in manufacturing. So it's in the factories. And that's total quality management, the continual process of detecting and reducing or eliminating errors in manufacturing. So to make sure the assembly line is being as productive as possible, ignore human happiness, shut or unless it makes them work faster, but it doesn't. We find that out. Science teaches us human happiness has nothing to do with their productivity uh, in uh, the workforce. So... You know, uh, it, basically the shift leader, right? And I don't know if you ever had a shift leader over your shoulder, but it's like, hey, mister, you know, you're not doing, you know, I I just sit there and I was just pushing these two buttons. And then it would just collapse some of the thing and then the the machine would do the rest. So I would just, that, that, that. 
And, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, uh, the shift leader would be over my shoulder. He's like, hey, you're not doing that redundant, boring-ass, repetitive bullshit thing efficient enough. Stay awake, right? Put bright lights in my face, loud, hor loud horns, keep me awake, you know, and just say, lift, right, lift, right, lift, right. Just to keep me on cadence, just to keep me on point, just to keep me doing the productive shit that they want me to do for this cheap ass, you know, five dollar an hour wage. So, um, I don't. It seems like to me it's not a business philosophy just to have a bunch of management. In fact, we need less management. We need more workers. The workers should control the factories. The managers don't do shit. The managers stay on top. They're the plantation owners. They stay on top and tell everybody else what the fuck to do. Well, you know, if working class people stopped then the whole machine would stop. And so working class people should be organized. Power should be organized, not disorganized, not unorganized. It should be organized, right? So labor is organized, and they are the salt of the earth kind of people, the working class people. So definitely for unions, total quality management and the total quality management, I like all those words, you know, I'm not going to be against it, but I want excellence, I don't want just quality, I want quantity too, I want a whole bunch of good quality things, I want excellence, I want huge productive gains, I want total positive growth management, total scientific management and engineering, efficient, productive, mathematical, precise you know, very precise management, mathematical precision, a management that has mathematical precision. Quality and quantity, lots of GDP, right? So it's not a business philosophy. That's just called being an asshole. In Pueblo City, total quality management just means you're a shift managing fucking prick, right? And what sucks about shift managers, they're bigger fucking assholes than the bosses and the owners are. They're their kiss asses. They have no power, but being the, they're the vice principal, right? They're the second in command, and they're bigger dicks, and that's crazy, actually. Then the manager actually would be the first fucking uh, uh, slave, right? <laughs> the first uh, fucking bits. The manager would be the first fucking bits to the owner. So, you know, the manager sets the whole thing. Everybody has to be oppressed because the manager's oppressed. Where I guess the boss is the same if the owner is the boss. But a lot of times the managers are they're bigger dicks than the person above them. And it doesn't make you give somebody a little bit of authority and they're like just they act like they're the fucking king. Are you the, you're not the king, but you have a little bit of authority. Also, now you're the king. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, just making sure the assembly line gets to be more productive, of course. Of course. I think we should care about human happiness too. So, other management theories, scientific management theory of motherly love. Mothers who just love their children and make them stronger. If we make our kids strong, then they would always be good because who would choose to be bad? If we make our kids strong, we will make them good. So, we need to make all of our kids strong. Strong and healthy, mind, body, spirit. Right? Isn't that the point? So, the theory of motherly love, the revolutionary theory of Martin Luther King inspiring the masses, not oppressing the shit out of them. So, total quality management. If this is the only thing that Dennis Flores has totally listened to, Dennis Flores don't know shit about life. He don't know shit about a lot of stuff. Um, total quality referent leadership. I don't even want the fucking management. He's a manager. He's an oppressor. Fuck the bullshit. I want friends. I want equals. I don't want middle managers, shift managers. Top managers, assistant managers, fuck all the managers. Fuck all the managers. I mean, they're just the assistant owners. So they're just, you know, anybody that's under the owner is insignificant, really, right? But maybe the owner. The owner should believe in democracy and de democratic systems. If the owner doesn't believe in democracy and democratic systems, then they're to blame. And the workers should just take over the means of production, and then the workers should just organize uh, amongst ourselves. So... Yeah, I don't understand why so many people are so ready to slice and dice each other over just a little bit of authority and privilege. Managers, when I think about managers, they're the plantation owners. They're the ones sipping lemonade while the workers are actually working. The basketball managers, the basketball players are the stars of the show. The basketball players are the ones who dunk. They're the ones that score the points. They're the ones that are exciting to watch. They're the ones that bring people to the bleachers. 
uh, into the stadiums, into the basketball courts to watch them. So they're the ones bringing in the ticket sales. They're the ones bringing in the excitement and the interest. And the money is why all these managers are able to do any of the shit that they're actually able to do. And yet, in college, they don't even get paid. In high school, that none of them get paid, right? Um, but they're the ones who win. They're the ones who win the games and the championships. And it's, um, you know, the players are the ones who are the champions, but it's the managers and the owners who are the exploiters of those champions. Uh, they should only be support staff underneath the basketball players, the people to make the basketball players as best as they could be, to push them to be the best basketball player that they could be. So what do bosses and or owners even do? They just provide the facilities. So we should just take the facilities over and organize amongst ourselves, organize democratic systems. If we choose to have one leader, well, then that's what we choose. But if we choose to have, uh, you know, no leaders, that's what we choose to have also. But it should be based upon the consent of the governed. I don't know if you've heard of that before. So, yeah, I want high quality referent leadership that goes above and beyond. I want to be serious about the the actual leader solving the problems, even large problems such as poverty, total quality, like quality poverty. <laughs> I want high quality. I mean, who the fuck says total quality? You know what? I want some total quality around here. Okay, well, not partial. Of course, you if you're going to have quality, you need total quality. But I want high quality, you know, high octane quality high octane performance i want performance i don't want just quality i want you know strong performance shake and bake kind of performance right <laughs> so i like quality quality food quality male bonding time quality air quality legal representation quality society quality democracy quality instant runoff voting quality fascism right quality cream of wheat quality sweet tea quality pizza actually Quality fascism, that's that's what quality management is. Management is fascism. It's straight up just oppressor. I'm the boss, you do as the fuck as I say. Fuck you. I'm not going to inspire the shit out of you. If you don't do as I say, I will fire you. And you will have no job and your kids will starve to death. So, quality fascism. Total quality fascism. That's what's going to come in, right? It's going to come in with any of these establishment figures. Baby Hitler is going to bring in quality fascism. The old goat head is going to bring in quality fascism. When I'm calling for quality instant runoff voting systems, and that's another thing about managers, when they get it wrong, he said the instant runoff voting is not the best thing. Well, he got it wrong. So what happens when you have an oppressive organization and the leadership and the management just got a, a major decision wrong for future generations? Uh, Dennis Flores just screwed over the democracy for not just our generation, but for generation upon generation until the end of time. So he screwed over our kids' uh, democracy, our grandkids' democracy. Instead of having the perfect ideal democracy, Dennis Flores says, I'm going to be, you know, do the Kyrgyzstan cutthroat election because I think I could just uh, spend a bunch of money and shove my uh, candidacy down your all's throats. And I don't think it's going to work. And uh, Lori Winters got that column. She hates, you know, the poor. I can't tell which one's a bigger Republican between Flores or uh, Lori Winter. But he's been a manager his whole life. Managers are the oppressors between the asshole oppressors and the criminal assholes. These Malp Wap Day Vole motherfuckers. I can't tell which one is worse. Which one's worse? Is it worse for to be an asshole oppressor or to be a criminal asshole? Huh? Which one? So, yeah, good old dogs. Oh! I bet it's yelling at a poor, a poor person. <laughs> poor homeless person has got too many clothes and it's stacked on top of one another. No, there's no, I don't see no danger. So, yeah, the Statue of Liberty wasn't asking for the assholes. Nobody ever says, hey, how come we don't have any assholes around here? We need some more. You know what this party needs? We need some more fucking assholes. We need some, you know, pieces of shit, some assholes, some shitheads, some dickholes. Uh, no, the Statue of Liberty said the tired, the poor, the distressed, not the pricks and the shitheads. So I want the other nations to leave the asshole, dickhole, pricks back into their own lands who created them. I see a difference between management and leadership. I don't want an authoritarian manager. I hate oppressors. Oppressors, if they keep their shit up, ought to be knocked down a couple times. Fucking oppressor. Freedom is one of the you know greatest uh, virtues out there. To be free? To be free? 
I mean, uh, think of all the other words that are great, right? Quality is okay. Quality is great, but I want quality freedom, quality peace, quality love, quality solidarity, quality family, quality home, quality peace and quiet, right? Quality security, if there's danger around here, but uh, I don't think there's any danger at all. Oh, there's a person talking. So, uh, really, the kind of leader is, unless you're part of the cabinet, I don't, I'm not going to listen to the mayor. I don't want, I don't give a shit. The mayor just needs to handle business and take care of things. So, when the mayor does address the people, when they address us, I want them to be an inspirer in chief. I want them to be informative. I want them to be forthcoming with information. I want them to give us so much information that we get sick and tired of quit giving us so much information about the city and the work that you're doing and all the progress that you're making. We're sick of winning Right, I want to actually have a leader where I, that I am sick of all the winning. I'm sick of the winning. I'm sick of the winning. So there's definitely a difference between management and leadership. Uh, manager is an authoritarian. It is an oppressor, and oppressors are the problem. Uh, between asshole oppressors and criminal assholes. I mean, asshole oppressors. You know, this isn't comfortable. This isn't nice. If you're just, you know, your dignity, every time you go to walk past a park and you're just being barked at like uh, you don't matter, that's rude and disrespectful and it's humiliating. And there's uh, a saying about the English that says their entire lives they live uh, to not ever be humiliated. And to watch, the, you know, the, their dog humiliate other people and to not say nothing about it, I mean, that basically is a, um, it's consent, right? That's a... Uh, um, what do you call that? That's a, uh, um, like a silent partner, a silent consent to the thing. So, now a leader, on the other hand, decides, you know, uh, everybody has a will to power, too. So, it's not like a genius to, to be an oppressor, to be a manager. Just shut up, do as I say, get to work, right? Hey, if you're not working, you need to get to work, which, personally, I wouldn't like to do. We might need some. But now a leader, because leaders and managers are two different, you know, kinds of people. Leaders, they wake you up. They inspire you to be the best versions of the, uh, of you that you can be. You shouldn't accept people for who they are if they're going around hurting others. Don't hurt others. You should not hurt others. But, you know, you shouldn't love the, uh, uh the sin. You love the sinner. Anyways, what am I saying here? <laughs> Not for your actions or behavior or racist ideology, but for who you are. No, fuck you. Fuck the sin, right? Fuck, if the sinner keeps sinning, then fuck the sinner too. If you're going around raping folks in the neighborhood or attacking them or robbing them or murdering them, if you're doing the four worst crimes out here, then you need to be dealt with. And we need a fair system of, gel uh, system of justice that actually does that. So that's when you need an oppressor. When you have violent crime, you need an oppressor. You need someone to say, you know, shut the fuck up, do this. But a leader... A Martin Luther King kind of an inspirer in chief. I want an MLK, Gandhi, Fred Hampton kind of leader. A Tecumseh, Robespierre, Dragon Canoe, Dessaline kind of leader. Uh, just a business oppressor. Yeah, they want to make a ton of money. Care about the customer and, you know, uh, clean. If you got time to lean, you got time to clean. Uh, good customer service. Get them, you know, whatever the customer wants, you get them, make them happy. But I want a good political leader, not just business sense. Get, have good business sense, right? Don't want you to waste a bunch of money. But politics isn't just business. Politics is actually keeping business uh, in check to make sure business isn't running roughshod over the working class. Politics is also where love and compassion comes into the equation. Politics begins around the kitchen table with the husband and wife and baby. That's where politics begins. So the, if the husband and wife can't pay their bills, if they are having a problem paying for their diapers, um, if they're doing great and they can afford vacations, that's where it begins. That's where politics begins, around the kitchen table in the home. Uh, I think it's with husband and wife or just with your partner, I guess, with your life partner. And I, I do two people, I guess, two people together around the kitchen table raising children, raising up the next generation. And that's actually probably the more important part, the raising of the children, not the husband and husband and wife and wife or husband and wife. But uh, a leader that says, you see all this bullshit, fuck all this bullshit, fuck all this bullshit, let's get through this bullshit. We're going to make it. We're going to be okay. We're going to get through the jungle. We're going to fight through this. We're going to clear ourselves a path, and we're going to clear ourselves a path for uh, not just us, but for our children and our children's children. We're going to clear a path for... Uh, 
many future generations. So Martin Luther King said, fuck the segregation. He was right. Americans, uh, America's founding father said, fuck the British imperialist redcoat sons of bitches. They were right. The Black Panther said, fuck the starvation. They started a breakfast program and they're right. Kids need to eat. We need breakfast. We need to break the fast. So, you know, I guess that's it for now, for the time being. There's lots of things to think about when it comes to total quality management. Uh, I don't, you could probably be a better, there's another uh, article that I had read. And remember, there's like, you know, all those other management theories out there. So why is this one the best one? What does Dennis specifically mean when he says total quality management? Uh, does he have his own definition or is this an actual thing? The ISO, how come he rejects the ISO 9000 theory? How come he rejects the theory of management the, of Toyota? Toyota isn't a good company. And uh, there is also, I want to say, the ISO was big companies too. It was uh, General Electric and Motorola had Six Sigma. So there's Six Sigma. That's a management theory. There's Lean uh, Theory, the Lean Theory of Management, the Six Sigma Theory of Management. The ISO 9000, the ISO 9001 theory. So these are general, what's wrong with the General Electric? General Electric isn't a, a good company. They've been a blue stock, you know, uh, a, a blue chip stock for quite some time. So General Electric, Motorola uses Six Sigma. Toyota uses Lean. So these are good companies. These companies are doing okay. So the Six Sigma theory of management is working. Lean management is working. ISO 9000, ISO 9001. Uh, these are different quality control, you know, if you're just all about quality control, but reducing the waste is important, having internal guidelines and processes, uh, standards reduce errors, Six Sigma looks to reduce defects, so total quality management tries to reduce errors, whereas Six Sigma looks to reduce defects, waste, trash, and then just life, the theory of life, scientific management, engineering management, mathematical management, the theory of motherly love, where you love people back to life, you love people back into the strong individuals that you know that they can be. And then the Martin Luther King revolutionary theory of inspiring the masses, not oppressing the shit out of them, but actually inspiring them to be the best that they could be. So... That's the kind of leader that I want. Um, it, you know, if you want to manage your cabinet or your staff, you know, with, with like an oppressive fucking prick, you know, I guess that's your thing. But I, you can't, I don't think you could treat the people like that. You need, well, you get out there and be like, hey, all you people, you're disappointing me, you know, completely. You need to get to work, get busy. I, I'm, I'm very disappointed in you. <laughs> uh, I guess they could try that, but that would be a speech to inspire too. So it would never be a fastest, you need to, you know, you disappoint me, and if uh, y'all don't start shaping up, then I'm going to send all my fascist thugs on you. So that's uh, fascist. To me, a fascist is a person that says, do what I tell you to do, or else there will be violence, be, you know, will be put upon you. You will obey me, or else you will put, have violence put upon you. The way that I like to make decisions is for you to throw the ball up to me. Here's the idea. Right, and if I want to take a swing at it, if I want to go along with that that, I, that idea, then I will. And if I don't, then I don't. And that's just how it is. Okay, and I'm gonna say no more than I'm gonna say yes. So yeah, you throw the idea up there and just let the person, if they want to do it, let them do it. If they don't want to do it, say la vie. Right. So yeah, that's a little bit about total quality management. I think Dennis Flores should expand. And get to know different uh, theories for his, you know, total quality management uh, ideology. And it must be a dangerous neighbor. Is it dangerous? Seems pretty quiet right now. Seems very, very quiet. I wonder. Trash. There's a trash. Yeah. Waste connections. Trash is driving by. I want the trash men to come around. <laughs> quit, quit barking at the trash men. Anyways, John Masters. <laughs>